in Black Caucus, a fundraising powerhouse. This came out on New York Times, February 13, 2010. When the Congressional Black Caucus wanted to pay off his mortgage on his foundation, stately 1930 Red Brick headquarters on Embassy Row, it turned to a familiar host to rest of France. Corporate backers like Walmart, AT&T, General Motors, Coca-Cola, and Atrium, the nation's largest tobacco company. Soon enough, in 2008, a jazz band was playing with Wilder to a mortgage-burning power for $4 million townhouse. Most political groups in Washington would have been barred by law from accepting subsequent direct aid from corporations. But by taking advantage of a political finance law, the caucus has built a, a fundraising juggernaut like any else in town. It has traditional political fundraising arm set to federal rules, but it also has a network of nonprofit groups and charities that allow it to collect unlimited amounts of money from corporations and labor unions. From 2004 to 2008, the Congressional Black Caucus political and charitable wings took in at least about $55 million in corporate and union contributions, according to an analysis by the New York Times, an impressive amount even by standards of Washington or Washcast. Only one million of that went to the caucus political action committee. The rest were in a largely unregulated nonprofit networks. The data for 2009 is not available yet. The caucus says it's nonprofit groups that and it's intended to help disadvantage African Americans by providing scholarships, internships to students, research policy, and holding seminars on topics like healthy living. But the bulk of the money has been spent on elaborate conventions that have become high point of Washington social season, as well as headquarters, buildings, golf audience for members of Congress, and annual trip visits to Mississippi casino resorts. In 2008, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation spent more than the character of its signature legislature dinner and conference, nearly 700000 for an event one organizer called a Hollywood on the Potomac. Then it gave out scholarships and federal tax records show. <clears throat> At these galas, lobbyists and executives who give the, Congress, who give the caucus charities to get in a meeting with the, with the lawmakers. They also get seats on the committee of the caucus that has the set up to help Congress, help members of Congress to decide on what position to take on the issues of the day. Indeed, the nonprofit groups and the political wings are so deeply connected, it's sometimes hard to tell where one stops and the other begins. Even as it uses status as a civil rights organization to become a fundraising powerhouse in Washington, the caucus have, has had a fended off criticism of ties to companies who have been seeing detrimental black constituents. This includes cigarette companies, internet poker, operators, beer breweries, and rental industry, which become a particular focus of customer advocacy for its practice of charging high monthly fees for appliances, television, and computers. The caucus leader said that, that giving has not influenced them. We are in Boston on broad, says Representative Barbara Lee, Democratic of California and chairwoman of the caucus. Historically, we've been known as a conscious of Congress, but we are the ones bringing up the issues that often go unnoticed are just on the table. But many campaign finance experts question the usual structure. They claim that this is truthfully, truly a, a philanthropic motive is bogus and is beyond credibility, says Murder McGee, policy director of the Level Legal Campaign Center in Washington, a nonpartisan group that monitors, monitors campaign finance and ethical issues. Members of Congress should not be allowed to have these links. They provide another pocket, a very deep pocket for special interest money that is intended for the benefit and influence of the office holders. Not all caucus members support the donors' goals in some issues, like a debate last year where the ban menthol cigarettes have produced divisions. But the caucus members have attracted increasingly scrutiny from ethics investigators. All eight open house investigations involve caucus members and a center of accusation of improper ties and private business. This examination by the time shows what can happen when companies offer financial reports to caucus members. For instance, Representative Danny K. Davis, Democrat of Illinois, once backed legislation that would severely curtail rent to own industry and criticized urban districts like his on the west side of Chicago. But Davis last year co sponsored legislation to support by the stores they have well financed campaign to sway the caucus, including a promise to deliver, provide computers to a jobs program in Chicago named for him. He denies any connection between the industry generosity and his shift. The caucus started out 40 years ago as a political club of a handful of black members. Now at its apex of power, President Obama is a former member, although he was never active. These Its members, all Democrats, include the third ranking highest member of the House, Representative James E. Clyburn of South Carolina, four House committee chairmen, 18 subcommittee leaders. Among those are Representative Charlie Erie Rango, chairman of the Ways and Means Commission, and Representative John Congress, the chairman of the Judicial Committee. 
There are hundreds of caucuses in, in, in Congress representing groups such as desperate as the Hispanics, Hispanic lawmakers, and those with interest in Scotland. Other members of the Congress have nonprofit organizations, but the Congressional Black Caucus stands alone for its money raising powers. As it had gained power, its nonprofit groups, one an outright charity, the other a sort of research group, have seen a surge in contributions, nearly doubling from 2001 to 2008. Besides the caucus charities, many members, including Mr. Clyburn and Representative William Lacey Clay uh, Jr. of Missouri, have had a personal or family charities, which often solicit donations from companies that give to the caucus. And their spouses have their own group that sponsors a golf and tennis fundraiser. The board of the, of the Correctional Black Caucus Foundation include executives and lobbies from Boeing, Walmart, Dell, Sitco Group, Coca-Cola, Verizon, Heineken, Anheuser-Busch, and the drug makers Amigan and Glasgow Smith Klein, all are hefty donors to the caucus. Some of the biggest donors also have seasoned the second caucus nonprofit organization, the one that can help their business. This group, the Congressional Black Caucus Political Education and Leadership Institute, draft position on con that goes before Congress, including health care and climate change. This means, for example, that lobbyists and executives from the coal and nuclear and power giants like Peabody Energy and Energy Tech helps drive a report in the caucus name that concludes their positions on controversial issues. One policy document issued by the Black Caucus Institute last year is said that a financial impact on climate change legislation should be way before it's passed, a major injury see stand. Officials from the Association of American Railroads, another major donor, use their board's positions to urge inclusion of language recommending increased spending on the national freight rail system. A lobbyist for Verizon overseeing a debate on a section that advocated increase of federal grants to expand broadband and a service. And Larry Duncan, a Lockheed Martin lobbyist, served on the Caucus Institute panel that recommended the United States form closer ties with Liberia, even as his country, even as his company was negotiating a huge airport contract there. The companies say their service to the caucus is philanthropic. Our charitable nations are charitable donations, said David Sylvian, a spokesman for Autrum, who has given the caucus as much as $1.3 million since 2004. The time analysis shows that during including donations, a capital fund raised used to pay off the mortgages in the caucus's headquarters. Elizabeth Scott, chief executive of the Correctional Black Caucus Foundation, announced that the companies want to influence members. In fact, the fundraising broker made it clear that the biggest donations the greater the access, like private receptions that include members of Congress for those who give more than $100,000. They are trying to get attention to the CBC members, said Mrs. Scott. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. They're a business and they want to deal with people who have influence and power. She also acknowledged that if her charity did not have the Congressional Black Caucus name, they would gather far more or less money. If it was named the Institute of Advancement of Black People, like you already have the NLACP, she said, Mrs. Scott said she too has heard the criticism that the Caucus Foundation take too much from the companies and seen as hurting blacks. But she said she is willing to take their money. Black people gamble. Black people smoke. Black people drink, she said in the interview. And also these companies want to take some of our money. They earn it off of our people and give us support for good causes. Then we'll take it. The biggest caucus event of the year is held each September in Washington. In 2009 event began with a rooftop party at the Hotel W. With the names of the biggest sponsors, the pharmaceutical sun companies, Amon and Eli, and Eli Lilly, meaning letter, giant letters in the hallway, next to the logo of the Correctional Black Caucus Foundation. A separate dinner party and ceremony sponsored by Disney and the National Women Museum of Women and Arts to feature jazz panelist Marcus Johnson. The next night, AT&T sponsored a dinner reception at Little Intercontinental, Washington, honoring Representative Bobby L. Rush. Democrat from Illinois and chairman of the House Committee, subcommittee that oversees consumer protection issues. The Southern Company dominated, dominated electric utility for the four east, southern eastern states, spent more than $300,000 to host an award ceremony in next honor of Mrs. Lee. The Black Caucus chairman was Susan Robinson, with Sean Robinson, a TV personality from Access Hollywood, as the co-host. The bill for the limousine service paid by Southern exceeded $11,000. A separate party sponsored by Macy's featuring a fashion show and wax models of historic African-American leaders. All this was just to build up for the final night in the biggest event, a black tie dinner for 4000 which included President Obama, the actor Danny Glover, and the musician Wyclef Jean. The annual spending of the event includes annual prayer breakfast that the Coca-Cola sponsors and dozens of, a dozen policy mm -hmm. workshops typically sponsored by other corporations and more than had doubled since 2001. 
The cost of three point nine million in April, three point nine million in two thousand eight, and more than three hundred and fifty thousand went to the official decorator, and nearly four hundred thousand the contractor for lighting and production shows, according to the tax record. The sponsorship of these parties and big business is usually conducted as a donation in the caucus books. But sometimes the corporation pay vendors directly and simply name the caucus or the individual caucus members as an honorary and the closure of this record is filed with the Senate. The New York Times Company has listed and has paid the foundation 5000 to 1500 in 2008. It's the cost of renting a booth and selling newspaper at the annual caucus conference. The foundation, and then I should say, the profit for the event is enough to finance programs like seminars on investment in home ownership and healthy living and housing for Washington interns, which is about 600000 in scholarships. The interns and students interview praised the caucus. An internship came for me at a very critical moment in my life, Irvin Johnson said, 24, and intern in 2007, placed at the Justice Department. Most people don't have that opportunity. The companies that host that event at the annual conference are engaged in some of the hottest battles in Washington. They frequently turn out to caucus members for help. Internet poker companies have been big donors fighting moves to restrict their growth. Caucus members have been among the biggest backers. Amiga and Vedita, which dominate the kidney treatment and dialysis business worldwide and national nationwide, had donated as much as $1.5 million over the past five years to caucus charities. And the caucus have been one of the strongest allies in bid to win broader federal reimbursements. AT&T and Verizon sponsored the caucus charity for years and turned the caucus into their efforts to prevent new federal laws of governing how cell phone carriers operate Internet service on their wireless networks. But a few of these alliances have paid off like the caucus, uh, caucus connections like the rent to own stores. Some Democrats in Congress have been tried to free limit fees of cu charge to customers who rent television and appliances. While critics are saying that industry advertisement prey on low-income consumers, however, the short-term promise of walking away with big team, big screen televisions while hiding big long-term fees, facing the rules that could destroy their business, the industry caught on a caucus. In 2007, it retained Zara Buck, a former aide to Representative Bernie Thompson, Democrat from Mississippi, and a caucus member to help us spend the lobbying campaign efforts. This trade association in 2008 became an exclusive sponsor and of the annual caucus charity foundation event where it donated televisions, computers, and other equipment were auctioned, with the proceeds going to a scholarship. It donated the campaign to at least 10 caucus members and 10 political action committees ran by the caucus and individual members. And its individual members. It also encouraged members to store up and donate to personal charities run by caucus members or to public schools in their district. Mr. Clay, the Missourian, had received 14000 in industry contributions for 2008 for his annual golf tournament his family runs in St. Louis. The trade associate also held fundraising events for him on, in Reno, Nevada. I will do my best to protect what really matters to you, Mr. Clay told the render own executive, who agreed to hold their 2008 convention in St. Louis in his home district. Mr. Knight requests for an interview. On visiting Washington, Larry Sisko, the president of the Trade Association, offered to donate pro computers and other programs to a nonprofit job training group in Chicago named in the honor of Mr. Davis, the Illinois congressman who, in 2002, voted in favor of tough legislation restrictions on the industry. Mr. Davis switched sides, and Mr. Carroll traveled to Chicago to hand over donations, including a van with the congressman Danny K. Davis job training program painted on the side, all which helped jump to start a charity run by Lorley Thomas, who works as a campaign aide to Mr. Davis. In an interview, Mr. Curran says the support of the caucus member came because they understood that his industry was unfairly being criticized with the porn service to consumers in their district. While some Congress members opposed the industry, 13 or so are co-sponsors of the industry-backed legislation that will ward off tough regulatory restrictions and alliance that are infuriated consumer advocates. It's unfortunate that members of the Black Caucus who are supporting the bill did not check with us first, said Margaret Sanders, a lawyer of the National Consumer Law Center, because the legislation they are supporting will simply exempt, exempt state laws that are designed to protect the consumer against an industry that ripped them off. So there you have it, folks. Your black leadership is already been turning as corrupt. I don't put a lot more stuff about this CBC and, it, and all these foundations and all the other stuff they got. But all that's doing is ripping black people off. They worse than a dope dealer because they know this shit going to kill you. And they get paid for that amongst their own little self. Like a talented tenth. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what basically what it is. Anyway, subscribe to this channel. Much love. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to keep on pushing this history on out there. Hey, keep on pushing. Much love to all y'all. Peace. Also, to tell your leadership ain't got no nuts.
They already been part of this stuff. Much love. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.